Okay, so we ended the last video here where monopoly as a market structure was neither allocatively nor productively efficient, both in the short and long term. And with no competition, it is also not dynamically efficient, which is sort of a productive efficiency in the long run, where the lack of competition results in the firm not having to work hard to improve their productive efficiency over time. However, there is also the possibility that this issue of dynamic inefficiency and X inefficiency, which was a limitation for perfect competition, may be addressed in a monopoly. For example, a company may continue to invest in research and development so that they can continue to possess that superior technology that other firms don't have with the incentive to maintain their monopoly power. However, despite this, monopolies generally result in the problem of prices being too high and quantities being too low. So we typically don't want monopolies to occur. So there are measures to prevent and address monopolies. Now note that these measures are forms of government intervention. So they require lots of monitoring and government competence to be carried out. One of the things you can evaluate in your papers is you can suggest these measures as a solution, but depending on the country you are talking about, you can say this may not be as effective because a government that is not very competent, one that has corruption and lack of organization, may not be able to carry out these measures in a way that will actually be impactful. So, the first measure is to either prevent a merger or break up a firm. It is quite common for two firms to combine into a larger one or another to buy, so acquire the other firm. Um, these are very common, and if you Google recent mergers, you'll get a long list to use for real-life examples. Since companies merging, especially large ones, leave fewer firms in the market, it gets closer to a monopoly market structure. So to prevent a monopoly, governments can stop companies from merging. Also, if a particular firm has gotten too big, then the government can break it up so that it won't control too much of the entire market. An example with these measures to prevent mergers or break companies apart is an example with US antitrust laws. These laws are meant to prevent anti-competitive behavior, such as mergers. The second thing you could do is placing a price ceiling or in placing quality control. Price ceiling is exactly what it sounds like. Since an issue with monopoly is that the price is too high, you can set a ceiling, so an upper limit, so that the price cannot be set greater than the price ceiling. The other is quality control. Another issue with monopoly is that there is no competition, and firms may produce a product that does not have the best quality because it can get away with it and people will still buy their good. So you can set in place some guidelines the firm has to meet. Say you say the product needs to pass some safety tests or cars must have seat belts. You can regulate that by guidelines or the law so that the resulting products, even in a monopoly, for sure have some level of quality. So to summarize, in order to regulate a monopoly where the price is too high and the quantity is too low, you can prevent mergers or break firms up. An example of how you would do this is through U.S. antitrust laws, or the second measure, you could implement a price ceiling or quality control. So thus far, we have talked about why monopolies can be problematic and how we may address those problems. In the next video, we're going to talk about what are called natural monopolies, where despite their limitations, situations where it makes sense to have a monopoly.